Live from Kalalu Studios in New York City. You are listening to Let's Take It Offline with your host, Kishana Palmer. Hey, Fab Crew. You're listening to Let's Take This Offline, the podcast for everyday leaders. Part inspiration, part sit down. Let's have a conversation. Here's where you'll find the real deal about living well and leading well. I'm Kishana Palmer, your host and resident leadership whiz. What happened in the meeting after the meeting? We talk about it all on Let's Take This Offline. Don't forget to subscribe, download, and leave a comment so we can keep the conversation going. Married to Minister Lopez Joel Dutruche and mommy to Amina, Maria Smith Dutruche spends her time healing, cultivating, connecting, and agitating. Maria has been a professional frontline fundraiser for more than 15 years. She is a member of the recently launched Rooted Collaborative, a global community focused on the holistic evolution and advancement of female leaders of color in the social impact sector. She is currently a senior advisor to the president and CEO of the National Urban League after more than five years as vice president in the Partnerships and Advancement Office of the Historic Civil Rights Organization. In addition to raising $51 million during her time as vice president at NUL, Maria played a critical role in shaping the organization's current racial equity partnerships. Prior to this role, Maria was assistant director of foundation relations in the central office of the Smithsonian Institution during the organization's history-making $1.5 billion comprehensive campaign. Maria is also a proud co-founder of New Voices for Reproductive Justice, a powerful organizing force for the health and well-being of black women and girls, women of color, and LGBTQ plus people of color at the local, state, and national levels. Maria is from Mount Vernon, New York, where she is a member of the Westchester Black Women's Political Caucus and Community Voices Heard. She is an Elias Foundation Activist Fellow and led the organization of Westchester County's first observance of National Day of Racial Healing on January 19, 2021. What's up, Fab Crew? It's your girl, Kashana, and we are back in the studio again, y'all. I mean, so... You know, all season long, I just keep bringing the heat. And I just feel so lucky that I actually get to have friends in real life who just know what they are talking about and are not afraid to cut up with me. And so I could not be more excited. And it's such a treat to have in the studio my friend Maria. And I'm so excited because, y'all, you know, we are in the zombie apocalypse, as y'all know. (laughs) But Maria is a New Yorker, same as me. And so we did all our social distancing, spraying down the mask wear. We got the babysitting, the Queen Ages upstairs babysitting right now. And we are able to be together in the studio. So Maria, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is a pleasure to be here live. <laughs> Come on, live. At Kalaloo Studios. Come on, Kalaloo Studios. <laughs> live from New York. It's Kashana. <laughs> I love it. Hey, Kashana. Hey, girl. So listen, Maria, when you and I were talking about, like, what are we going to talk about on our uh, episode? We had gone back and forth for a minute on, like, so many different so things. So many things. So I figured we would do a little bit of an alphabet soup. But one of the things that stood out to me that I thought we should dig into is this idea that you kind of dropped in my lap about um, being basic. Mm-hmm. And chasing excellence. Hashtag life goals. Oh, (laughs) so wait a minute. So, you know, when we think about this whole concept of being basic, when Mm -hmm. you talk about basic, what are you actually saying? Break it down for me so we can kind of just jump right into it. Yeah. You know, I'm still trying to figure it out. But basically, (laughs) I am surrounded by 
people like you, you know, Kashana, definitely people like you who are just, when I think of black excellence, right. Um, they're just excellent. And it's not in, in everything they do and how they are and how they show up and who they be. And I just feel like, wow, <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. That's so much <laughs> pressure. That's a lot of pressure. Like when you think about it, that's a lot of pressure. First of all, I feel pressure right now. My whole chest is hurting. Okay. <laughs> this is my spirit. Everything is hurting. My whole, I am mean, am I having an anxiety attack? No, take What's a deep happening? breath. Take a deep breath. Yes. Mm. Yeah, Maria got me in the hyperventilating. Yeah, I just want take, a deep, take a deep breath. Um, no, so I just, I just have been thinking, what else could life look like, right? Like if I don't fall into the trap of Ooh. false dichotomies and binaries, and it doesn't have to be all excellence or all trash, you know, where can I? What what does basic? What does basic like? even look like? Can I just be living my life like? Loving my husband, going to my job that pays my bills and pay them and just be a basic black girl out in the world. Like when I think of the existence and I uh-huh. don't want to make it a comparative thing. So let's suspend real comparison, but just for something else to look at. Yeah. To see, yeah, does it yeah, stick? I'm going to yeah. throw it on the wall and see if it sticks. Do it, do it. When I think of the mediocrity of the average white man, Woo! who just gets up, lives his life. Come on, Kevin. You know, Kevin, let's, Kevin, let's give him a name. Come on, Kevin. Let's humanize him. Humanize him. makes you feel better, right? Okay, because when Kevin gets up in the morning. Kevin gets up in the morning and maybe in the before times or even during the COVID times, he hops on the train, no bag. No bag. No bag. Doesn't even have a coat, really, because his train stop's going to leave him right in the basement of his building. That's it. And, he, you know, he's got his hands, long hands in his pockets. <laughs> just his long hands. Just his long hands in his pockets. Maybe he has an ear pod in. Maybe, maybe doesn't. Maybe taking up way too much space than he deserves. <laughs> you know. <laughs> two seats. Two seat and a half. Seats. See, and then, on the then, commuter rail. It makes me very upset. You know, looks at you upset when you look like, can you scooch? You know, he doesn't yeah. He doesn't want to scooch. He doesn't want to scooch. Um, and he's not He's not mean about it. It's he's just, just enjoying his, his morning He's time. just like, this was my space, man. Right. Dang, bro. And, you know, I'm thinking about, I don't want to be Kevin. Right. Because I don't really know Kevin. This is a caricature. But there's nothing particularly special. excellent, special, yeah. precious, or yeah. distinct about him. He's a basic dude on the train. And I'm wondering, what does my life look like when I just get to be basic me living my life without this pressure oh. to do twice as much to get do twice as much to get half, right? If I can just do and get at the level that feels appropriate, is is that it? Is that I'm I'm exploring the definition. So I, my mouth is open right now because because <laughs> <as you laughs> I'm like. I'm trying to imagine what life would look like if I didn't have to, if I didn't feel Mm -hmm. like I had to do all the things. Right. What what, What would it look like if I just took up the space I took up without any adornment? If I didn't have to be shinier, if I didn't have to turn my smile up an extra notch, Mm. If I didn't have to make sure I remembered, be warm. Mm-hmm. If I didn't, and it's not fake to be clear. Right. But it's practiced and it's not practiced from two years ago. Oh, you start getting that practice real early with good brought and good. good manners. Let's just be good. clear. So Let's it starts at the house with good be manners. clear. But it extends into every area of what you do. And when you show, and I'm going to use air quotes, promise mm, from mm. early on it's like you remember all the movies where you see all of the cars that are flying in the air and they're in these imaginary lanes yeah and they have to move in the air in this certain amount of traffic it feels like you pull into a certain lane i'm imagining the jetsons and i see what you're saying you see what i'm saying right now i do and you just pull it and you pull out into the lane and then you got to hit that imaginary hov lane of excellence and there doesn't seem like there's ever an opening to pull into the middle lane. You go into the same place. It's You're... like, I don't want to be running this race at this pace, right? So if if you, I ran track in high school. I wasn't mm-hmm. that great. So this is good. <laughs> um, <laughs> there were great people on my track team. I was not one, You're of, not them. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you were among so, them, but you were not one of them. <laughs> but, but the thing with the race, and I was I was a sprinter, is that once you get in the lead, 
your objective in the race is to widen that gap. Yes. It is to not give up the lead. Yeah. And because I'm a sprinter and life is not a sprint, I am exhausted from the expectation that I will continue to widen the gap. And while in the world of track and field, widening the gap and coming in first is a great accomplishment in life. Widening that gap is isolating. Oh my gosh. It could be lonely. Oh my goodness. It actually, it, it's, it's proven. It's, it's like it's actually, studies. Anytime you look back, you shave, you, um, you add seconds. It slows you down to look back. Just to look over, so, you, just a glance just over to your shoulder. Just a glance, oh, it shuts, it slows you down. So you have nothing else to look at but the emptiness and the finish line in front of you. And once you get to that finish line, if you're a sprinter, then the race is over. You kind of recover. Um, you do a, you do a, um, you do a victory lap maybe. Yeah. Um, but in life, Especially, I think, for a lot of black people, specifically black women, they were my favorite people. Um, it's right into another sprint. It's an anaerobic ro- workout. You are running a marathon at a sprint. And it's not self- it's not healthy. And I'll say to the the, the George Jetson that analogy you gave, Kelsey Gamble, I don't know who you are, but you're on Twitter. God bless you, Kelsey. Um, <laughs> Kelsey tweeted, kids who grew up, quote, academically gifted, end quote, are now... Anxious adults who have thousands of abandoned hobbies and spiral into self-hate whenever they don't achieve something yeah. or, or they are doctors. There's no in between. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's no in between. And I, I don't, I just want to be somebody with a few hobbies that don't have to be monetized. I, um, I want to just kind of be, I remember when I used to work at the Smithsonian I would look out of the window of the castle onto the National Mall and there would be people in the middle of the day sunbathing and playing yes. softball. Oh, that sounds like my college and, and high school experience. And I'd say, wow, I wonder what kind of job do they have? What are they doing? Like, <laughs> We have two different questions. Look at that. I'm like, what kind of job do they have? And you're like, what are they doing? Period. <laughs> right. You know. That's so wild. There are so many people when I look at what I see of their lives. And of course, I'm on the outside. Right. So I don't really know. Right. And my question in my head is always, well, how? 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 How is it even possible? So it's so interesting you talked about that. So I am a woman of a certain age. And you know, <laughs> I, I crossed the threshold of my 40s a couple of years ago. Congratulations. Hey, I'm still cute, cute, cute. Super cute. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I pulled a young one. And such a maker of a home, people. You don't know it, but <laughs> <laughs> I've been inside the inner inner in her lounge here and it's, uh, it's fantastic it's quite nice <laughs> could be an interior designer in another life i had a gentleman caller once tell me that it looked like a hallmark set at christmas oh hey. he was accurate i am a high value woman <laughs> hi <laughs> i heard that on clubhouse and i have not been able to let it go girl in clubhouse. months oh my god clubhouse is all the- we're gonna get to that because basic can you be basic and what does excellent look like? We can talk about that from Clubhouse. But one of the things you just said that stuck that stood out to me is around the hobbies. I, if you would have asked me even six months ago, Kashana, what what do you do for fun? Mm. I literally would have been like, oh, so you, you know, uh, I, uh, um, uh, and I would have just ran read. I mean, like, what was the last book you read? Do uh, you read? Yes, I have lots of I books. I mean, I know. I see the books. See the books. There's a library. There's actually. a whole, isn't it good? It's good. It's have you read all these books? No. <laughs> no. no. I, They're no. very well placed. They are so well. I, I will read them. Mm-hmm. I love collecting books. <laughs> I love the feeling when I go, ooh, I'm going to read that book right. soon. Right. Someday. Because when I do crack it, it is highlighted. It is bent back. I stay up all night and I'm nerdy. So I'm the person that when outside was open, mm-hmm. I would take a business book's on my vacation to read on the beach. Cause that was my only time that I could just like relax and just like get into my nerd stuff. But I digress. So mm-hmm. what I did a few months ago, when I was asked that question for the, what felt like the 1,236 <laughs> times Maria, I could, I said, I'm going to go get me, I'm going to get me a hobby. Mm. I'm going to get me a hobby. And well, I was okay, like, that sounded like hubby, but okay, keep going. You know, that's your mission. You can have both. 
I mean, we did say that that was going to happen for me this year. Look, you're going to help manifesting. I just want to let y'all know that I'm single, single. <laughs> Wait, let me do it on key. I'm single, single. Mm. Okay. Ooh. I like the choir. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you got a hobby. So one of the things I did was I had to, I had to actually recall when was the last time you did something just for the love of doing it that did not have anything to do with money. Cause I love shopping. So I can shop for other people. I find joy in being like, I could be somebody's um, personal shopper. I used to do secret shopping in grad school for extra money. I mean, I loved it that much. Okay. There probably was a whole career I skipped, (laughs) (laughs) but but see how that the money's related. So when I think about what am I going to do that doesn't involve money at all, Mm. I had to go back to childhood. Isn't that a myth? And so I started taking voice lessons again. Because I love to sing and I'd lost my voice. I stopped singing in college. Um, and, you know, the fact we were talking talk about this before, so this is not new news, but just showing up every week for voice lessons mm-hmm. and there's no concert. Right. There's no performance I got to do. I'm not I'm not practicing. There's no audition happening. It is just for the love of being able to find my voice again and, and centered in, the, in my love of music. That for me was huge. And then the over, you know, my maximizer strength came out just so you know. And then I was like, and while I'm here, I'm gonna learn to play the piano because, you know, who over 40 is learning to play an instrument? No one. So of course I'm competing with myself. Ridiculous. But to your point, when do we get to do stuff just for the love of doing the thing that it doesn't, it's not connected to some version or some point on our life path. And so I love um, you bringing that up. And that quote was so dope because it really does speak to, I was among the gifted, okay? Mm. New York City in the 80s, the gifted and talented program. I got plucked from the regular kindergarten class. <laughs> Somebody gave me some uh, some test. And then next thing you know, I was in Miss Gold's class. You're you on know? some track. On some track. And that's the thing. It's like how there has to be another existence off the track. Now, I believe that there are some folks who got plucked who are happy yeah. on the quote unquote, you know, black excellence track. Um I I don't know if I'm happy on it. And I think Why? I What's just up? it's an exhausting track. It's a fast paced, um for me, performative track. I don't yeah. know if at my, in my, I don't know if in my natural state mm. I can stay on the track. I think that in like a decathlon, I can maybe meet y'all at one event <laughs> <laughs> and then go back to my regular pace. <laughs> you know, like, You're like this is the event I really shot. You're like, oh, oh, y'all oh, do the shot put. Y'all Here we go. Here y'all do the shot put. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> you want me to throw this javelin? I got gotcha. you. But um, <laughs> but to just do the whole decathlon on I'm going to win every event, I don't have that energy right now. And I don't yeah. think I've had that energy for a while. I remember being very motivated and committed to not paying for college. My parents Whew. did everything they could do to pay for my, my elementary and high school education. Are you so, a private school kid? Yeah, you know, I went to Catholic school. Yeah. And um, good for them. Um, good for us. Good for everybody. It was all right. Um, and and to this day, I'm just not sure if that made a huge difference. Right. You know, I'm glad for the friends I have from that experience. Absolutely. I feel amongst my friends today, I am the most um, equipped to handle the foolery that we're seeing in our that we've seen in our national leadership. Yeah. Like I can sit down right now and look at people's Facebook feeds and what they've been posting for the past five years and be like, oh, I can tell who did not go to middle school with mediocre white people. Yep. I did. And none of this is shocking to me. No, nothing like, this is, is shocking to me. Mm. This is this is what it is. OK. Um, but a lot of people didn't get that in, in my black circles. Right. And there's, mediocre doesn't necessarily mean poor. Like I think that no, there's a, back, no. back to your very beginning statement where you talked about the false equivalency of being one thing or another. Right. And in fact, you can be wealth. You can have wealth. Your, your mama, your family can have wealth and you yourself, ma'am, sir, or they <laughs> can have, can be mediocre. Right. Just like, showing up in the world. Mediocrity has nothing to do with like 
economic status. It does not. But or it social has social class. But you know, that's the price tag that gets attached to it. Mm-hmm. One of them. One of them anyway. One of them, yeah. So I just I I feel I because I was so motivated to not have my parents break their back to pay for college. Yeah. And let's not even pretend that I had a sense of how like debt worked and how like loans I worked. Like I didn't I didn't have a sense of that. I just figured I'm going to get a scholarship so they don't have to pay for it. That's it. That was And if I didn't get a scholarship and I had to take the loans on my back, I was still committed to they are not going to have to pay for this. Little did I know they couldn't have paid for it anyway. Hello. But um, (laughs) I was just committed to like they've done enough. Yeah. They have done enough. I can handle the college thing. And so I did get a scholarship. I did not go to an HBCU. I went to the University of Pittsburgh, which is a great place for me. Um, Then I lost the scholarship. The scholarship was contingent upon my keeping a certain GPA and I dipped. And then I met a fabulous black person in the financial aid department who was like, well, this is how I learned how to read contracts. When I lost that scholarship, he was like, well, look at the terms. As long as, yeah, he's like, as long as your average GPA is over X, they have to pay for eight semesters of your education. And I was like, I don't, I don't, that does not compute. What? I lost the scholarship. He's like, no, you lost the funding in this semester because your grades dropped. If you pick them back up and your average GPA is over what the terms and conditions are, they actually have to pay for another semester because they didn't pay for this last one because your grades dropped. So as long as you're both holding up your ends of the bargain, these are the terms. These are the terms. So I was like, oh, and he was, he like schooled me to the whole, he's like, you're taking a lot of hard courses. I don't know who you're trying to prove. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, I don't know what you're trying to prove. I don't know who you're trying to impress. <laughs> but the degree is the degree. He's, he's like, like this is clear. a very heavy schedule. And if your intention is to just get the scholarship back, you need to take whatever classes you need to take in this semester to, to get, get your there. grades up. Girl, I took four classes of African dance. I was in them streets. I was, <laughs> I was, I was Manjani Fulani. I was, mm, yeah. Mm, back, back, back. I know you. You're like, I am an expert. You know Girl, exactly what I to was, do right now. 3.8. We was back on top. And then I went to Brazil because I was like, oh, y'all need to pay for the summer semester because y'all only these semesters. Right. And I had come in competitive. I came in with some AP credits. Yep. So I was. So like, you had time. Same as I, me. I have time. Yeah. I was like, I'm not. I understood the time that I was like, uh, actually, I feel like I placed out of the just about all my freshman year. Yeah. So based on these grades. Once I once that amazing angel Oliver, amazing angel in financial aid, just like walked me through the contract and like this is how college works. You don't get a badge. No one's giving out Girl Scout badges for I had the, the, I had hardest, the, heaviest, the load. heaviest load. I took on 21 credits. So and I, did you finish? Yes, no. I did finish. I no, did. that's what the question that yeah, folks are going to ask the other it. end. Employers are not going to be like, oh, I'm so excited that you took the, in, the the hardest classes you could possibly take. Did you finish? Yes, no. Can you send your transcripts? Yes, no. And there were so many other things like internships and, yes. you know, a lot of, you know, just experiences. But didn't you feel like there were so many like steps that you felt like you had to take to be excellent? I think what, what I've been sitting here thinking about as we talked about, like just being able to be basic is that even our bar for basic feels pretty darn high. Like, I don't feel like I'm at the, the on the resort doing, you know, dancing under the bar. Okay. <laughs> being able to be like, Tonga, Tonga. What like when I think about, I really do need to put more thought into what for me, What is my basic existence? Yeah. And I think that because so early on we're plucked Mm -hmm. and told this is how hard you have to work. Yep. This is what your full potential is. The idea that I need to be at an exhaustion level all the time. For me at this point, excellence and exhaustion are kind of living in an ecosystem together that feels unhealthy. They feel a little unhealthy together. Um, if there was a way to change those E's and make it like excellence and ease, <laughs> I'd be all about it. But it just feels performative and exhausting. And so if I could find a way to be very clear about who am I at a basic level, I think part of why at this stage in my life, yeah, I'm still struggling to define that is because I haven't had the opportunity to explore it since I was five. Since you were five. Same. There's always something and it doesn't 
help that as we look to the professionals who are a few years ahead of us, a decade ahead of us, because we're cuspers in our generation, right? And so it doesn't help that we're looking at women who have made a lifetime of playing a part in a role so much so that I'm not sure they know when the, when, when the director said cut. And so then we are also navigating those relationships and that example. And how does that help us or hurt us? What do you think? If I were accepted into a PhD program today, yes. What would the dissertation be? This is what I would study. The, the, life and career experiences of high performing black women ages 45 to about 55. I think that they have not each and every single one. I don't know Mm -hmm. each and every single one. Um, We know a good number. We know a sample set, a sample set. We know a good, we know a sample set, a healthy sample, healthy sample set have been doing immersive survivors theater. Whoa. (laughs) And Whoa. <laughs> Immersive survival theater. Yes. That's a forget it. That's deep. A, that's they've deep. been deep undercover trying to infiltrate. And it's like, I don't know. They've they've sacrificed so much. They've given so much. They've done so much. They've contributed so much. Like I'm not, I'm in awe and I'm also like, this is awful. Right. Because I'm talking about price? women who are still trying to figure out how to partner with another human for their life. Yeah. Women who are convincing themselves to this day that they'll be OK without that baby. Yeah. Right. Like to, to go to a hard place. That's a hard place. That's a hard place. Um, And I, I'm just now like. Solange's song just came in my head. Like they're trying to shop it away. Yes. Travel it travel away. Travel it away. Work it away. I mean, it it hardens a part of you. It does. And a part of them has had to be hard, has had to become calloused to survive. Like people, <laughs> I was talking to somebody about bunions on feet. And Come on. Hate bunions on feet. <laughs> what a conversation. <laughs> and I'm just like, don't hate on the bunions. Bunions got functions. Uh, you know, bunions. bunions got, they're not cute though, but they do have a function. They're not cute. And they do have a, there's a part of your foot that is um, sensitive and would be vulnerable if this deformity did not protect protect it. So when I meet these hard chip shoulders, like we have been out here in, in these streets. streets. In these oh, streets. you said in the field. I was like in these streets. You're we, like in the field. Well, in the industrial complex. Look, pink. in in these suites. In these. Ooh, we've been out. We've here. been out here in, in these, these suites. suites. First and only. First and only. Carrying the representation of every on our back, whether we've been asked to or not. Yes. Um, when I meet them and they're mean and they're not interested in my free spirit being in their corporate space, <laughs> <Or mine. laughs> um, say. you know, before I get defensive and meet their energy with that like energy, energy, exactly. I really, really try to be super soft. I really just try to be like, you're just so great. And I may not be just like you, but I thank you so much mm-hmm. that they saw you felt good about that choice and gave me a shot. Yep. I'm not going to disrespect that. I'm going to be myself. But I'm, I'm not, not going to I'm, I'm not gonna disrespect that. Right. And I just, when I think of what they've encountered and dealt with. Yeah. Um, I really want to honor that, but I can't emulate it. I don't want to imitate it. It, it feels like I just want to come in here and do my job, babe. And be, just be myself. Be, I want to be good at it, but like, and be myself. And be myself. I want to. I want a Toni Morrison. This thing, like, I am not the job I do. I am the person I am. Ooh. And yet, we are taught explicitly, implicitly. We are given smoke signals, carrier <laughs> pigeons, 
accolades, awards. The, the, I feel like the awards are the death trap. And I might be biased because I've not gotten any awards. <laughs> I was about to say, well, I don't have any awards. So I maybe a, that's why know, I'm living. I'm like, I don't have no awards. So I might be biased against it because I have not gotten these accolades. But I also feel like that. I wonder if that is also a prison um, that we keep adding on to our sentence the more that we are um, put onto a pedestal and that it doesn't feel really like a pedestal. It feels like a perch mm. because a ledge, a ledge, a ledge that your choices are. You continue on this road of air quotes, excellence, mm-hmm. which feels like exceptionalism. Whoa, there it is. And mass. Because it's not like 10 people out of 100 feel like they need to be <laughs> exceptional. It's like 98 people out of the 100 feel like they have to be exceptional. In which case, that does make us exceptionally average. Averagely exceptional. Welcome to my basic universe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but it still, do the math. It still elevates it does. what we consider basic. And it, 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 help, it helps me to explore what just being looks like. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back in a few. Did you know women of color in the social sector are most likely to have an advanced degree, but least likely to hold a leadership role within an institution or organization. Instead, they are most likely to hold a line staff role with significant unseen barriers to promotion and advancement. A poignant reality is that most Black, Indigenous, and people of color in the social sector often work under a cloak of invisibility, which can make working relationships and progression a real challenge. This is one of the reasons why the Rooted Collaborative exists, to amplify and empower our female voices while providing community, culture, and coaching that honors a healthy career experience. The Rooted Collaborative is a global community focused on the holistic evolution and advancement of female leaders of color in the social impact sector. Our goal is simple. We will help you cultivate your unique personal, professional, and wellness goals that will help you design and live a purpose-driven life. With a growing online community that spans over 16 countries, including the U.S., Canada, the U.K., and South Africa, we've learned a thing or two about building relationships that extend beyond borders. It's kind of our superpower. Don't believe us? Cool. Pull up a seat and get ready to be empowered, encouraged, and equipped for the life and the career that you deserve. Join The Rooted Collaborative today by visiting therootedcollaborative.com and click on Membership so that you can join us. Okay, so thinking about the women that we would want to be our mentors, the generational transfer, we're going to jump in that in a second, Mm. and then this idea of basic. Okay, here's how it's coming together in my (laughs) mind. The idea of being authentic, Mm. Mm -hmm. that I know some of my mentors who are more seasoned in the crock pot of life. Have looked sideways, askance, and askew. And they've been like, oh, Kashana, you're so colorful. You're so bright. <laughs> and I'm like, I just don't feel like that is really a compliment. But I am bright and colorful. I've always been that way. But this idea of being authentic and this idea of basic actually being about just being able to be as smooth in my own character. As yeah. I am. You see how I broke that acronym yeah. down? Come on, bring it to me. Real time. Real time. I was on the fly. That, look, that was rapping in freestyle, okay? Trademark it today. Like, today. And so, but, okay, authenticity, basic, and then the performative excellence. So when we think about the roadmap of some of our mentors, of some of the folks who, they're mentors in our head. Mm, definitely. Women that we look up to, the road that we think we want to tread we're hoping, okay, so you've been out here toiling in the C-suite. Mm. So you will, you know the road. So you are going to reach behind you 
and lift as we lift climb. as we climb and pull me onto that you know in the airport when you well when the airport was open and you get on that belt <laughs> you can walk alongside it to get from gate to gate but you can also get on that thing mm-hmm. and just go boop, 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 skip yourself down to the next thing get on that conveyor belt why every time i get on the conveyor belt of help <laughs> i feel like the the help the you know the the uh construction sign is up they're like this conveyor belt does not work please walk around <laughs> And I remember my ex-husband's mother um, said to us a long, this was donkey years ago, that, well, I had to work really hard and put myself through school. And you expect me to make it easy for you? And I was like, yeah, this math is not correct. <laughs> <laughs> this math is not right. Yeah, the answer, in fact, lady, is yes. 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 Y- yes. <laughs> so what do you think is happening there with the... And I, I, I see a lots of talk. Let's be clear. You look at the LinkedIn, look at the Twitters, look at the thing. There's a lot of conversation happening. But when we have closer in conversation, mic off in, you know, on the Zooms, in the locked rooms. Taking it offline. Taking it offline. Hey. Mm-hmm. A lot more of us are saying like, oh, actually, sis really wasn't <laughs> doing the thing she was tweeting about. She kind of lying. <laughs> oh, what do you gosh. think is happening there? Um... I want to just name trauma. I don't want to put trauma on people. Right. If you don't feel like you've been traumatized, that is your truth in that, right? Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. heard a great definition of trauma that is, I don't want to get wrong. I wish I had written it down, but it, it to the effect of trauma affects your nervous system. Yes. So when you've experienced it, when it hits you, when you've been traumatized, yes. There is a belief, there's a the feeling, there's a reality in your body yep. that you yourself cannot make yourself safe. So if you've been, if these these people we're talking about have, if we believe that there must have been some trauma, the buildup of microaggressions, right? Yes. Like the language we have today, they didn't have at all the access to. It was just take it. It was literally just take, take it. it. And leave your it at boss, work and your try boss to come wants on. to slap you on the butt. Take, take it. it. They're not going to give you the promotion and you know it because you're black. Take, take it. it. It's a good job. Just do what you're doing. You yeah. know, so there's a lot of taking it and taking it has a toll. It does. And maybe that toll is trauma. Right. In addition to real, for real, for real, like trauma. Right. Yep. And so if you in your own body, in your own space, in your own environment, at your own job, do not feel safe. I find it very hard to believe you can lead someone else to safety or at least show the path. Come on. to say You cannot do it. Cannot do it. It is not your own fault. If you have not engaged in any healing, you cannot help somebody else navigate those waters. You are a ship about to capsize. Absolutely. I got to let you go down. Absolutely. I went to therapy because I had a, horrible situation in a job one time. And I was like, let me look at my um, benefits. E- EAP was one of them. I said, I'm going to activate <laughs> look, that activate today. EAP. <laughs> yeah. Activate the EAP button pressed. And I went, the first therapist I went to wasn't really great. Um, he did tell me get a hobby. <laughs> to to hobby. Like, you know what? This job is just, a, you're talking a lot about the job. And I think, <laughs> I think my therapist might have said that. To that. I think you should just get a yeah. hobby. Something else. That'll to think fix about. it. Didn't fix it, but whatever. I appreciate him for that. And I went on to the next person on my list. Um, And this is something I carry with me from when I spoke to this person back in, I'm not going to say the date because you can check my LinkedIn and figure out where I might have been working. And I don't want to do that. (laughs) But I've been carrying it for years. And he, he said to me, look, if you happen upon a lion in the desert and it is wounded and it is going to die, you cannot save it. It will kill you and then it will die. That's it. Wow. It will kill you and then it will die. Don't try to save that lion. Back where our ancestry is, Kishana, on the lovely, beautiful, tiny island of Jamaica. Of Jamaica. (laughs) Sorry for Maga dog, Maga dog, turn around, bite you. Come (laughs) day. Which means you see this little malnourished animal. You know, you're watching the PETA commercials. Oh, my God. Oh my God. If I just send five dollars. Of an angel. Come on now. Come on, Skip. What? With the little eye full of crust. I have a dog looked at the house. I just want you to know. Every time Chanel looks at us, I feel like she's just singing to me. 
in the arms of... I'm like, if you don't stop it right now... But you, you see, and you, you get see empathetic, it. and you, you go, do. oh, I just want to help this little dog. Let me extend my arm and let it know that it's love. Pop! Yep. Bite off your fingers. They, I mean, they are trying to survive. They're in survival mode. This is not a space of empathy and healing and humanity for them, right? They are like, I am fighting. And I think that's the thing. And I could be super wrong, right? But for me, my experience of observing and trying to play with black excellence is it looks too much like a fight. Yes. I actually, <laughs> let me just sit in there for a second because I was about to just <laughs> respond. And I'm like, wow, I actually said today, giving folks more tools in their toolbox so they can be prepared for the fight. Because we, we're, we're ready to suit up. We're ready. Assume it's a fight. Ready. And we assume it's a fight because we've got this narrative, I got to overcome and I got to win. And it's like, well, why? What Against whom? What are we talking about? And I'm not against them. Just, just lay it out for me. I need the basic model. Lay this out for what me. What is the basic? <laughs> That's like when you go into a dealership. And, <laughs> first of all, I don't ever pick the basic model. Like my dad was teasing me the other day. I know you love my dad. And he was like, if you give Kashana a blind, a, you know, give her a blindfold. <laughs> and if I do a taste test, guaranteed you're picking the most expensive. Yo. Expensive wine in the, in the batch. Right. And I was like, it's true. Because you can have discriminating taste you can and that just be who you are who you are that could be your basic that could be your basic now why you got to have discriminating taste and be the ceo and take your clients and your and your staff out to dinner and pop out your some some sommelier certificate like why gotta why why do all that why just, why just, hey i just happen to love wines guys it's just it's my thing that's my thing i know just that. leave it at that and the story and good night it's this idea that we don't have to put on. Look, I'm going to say some stats that might hurt some feelings. But let you me, know what? Let me hit them. Because you know I know you coming with the stats. There is a bomb in Gilead if you hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fix yourselves. Listen. <laughs> listen. Um, I remember people, and for good reason. I'm not trying to say this is a bad thing. I'm not a, I'm not a either or type of person. I'm a, hey, here's some no, stuff. Here's some Stick, stuff to throw think it up, about. Throw it up, see what sticks for you. Um, Black women highest growing, fastest growing number of entrepreneurs, right? Ooh, come on, talk about it. Black women, most degreed subset of people. Educated. Most educated people. And you know what? That's awesome. The story there for me is our commitment to our, our, our success, right? Our commitment Absolutely. to, I want to learn this. I want to grow. I want, I want access. I want, to me, it sounds like a cry for help. If we could just get one more thing. If I could just get this one more, if I, if, if, and look, if you know me, my name is Maria Dautrush. If my number is in your cell phone, you know, already don't call me telling me in 2021, you're about to get another master's degree. Oh my gosh. The number of folks that I'm like, why? You don't need What it. are you in school again? For poor quat is my response. <laughs> Poor quat. <laughs> if you ever join me on my basic island, that's the language we speak. Poor quat. Because <laughs> it's like, but folks, but literally, then I literally the other day was like, yo, I wonder if I should really get a PhD. The only answer that's okay for me is because I want it. Oh, that's the only answer that's okay for me. And that's a degree. That's a certification. That's a designation. That's a promotion. That's a, because I want it. Okay, boo, do you. I got you. I'm on team you. Let's do it. Everybody is not trying to access the power seat. Everybody is not trying to access fill in the blank. Because so, some of us have already acknowledged that we're in it. Come on. Just being. Just being. And I think that's my basic package. It's like, I'm just here being. You just come Myself. with it. That's what you don't. Okay. So the, first of all, this is one of the, I, I bought a car that folks would consider to be a luxury car. It's you, but it's new to me. Okay. <laughs> I was feeling footloose and fancy free. Um, when I got, cause you know, the pandemic purchases, I was like, Ooh, there's a lot of cars like mine on the road. Now everybody was saving their money, not going to brunch. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized that what I got in the basic model of my RAV4 did not come in the basic model of my exit. 
I actually had to pay a whole lot more. Come on. To get the basic stuff that came. My rap were off the shelf. It was like in automatic honor, everything. In honor of the production value, I'm not going to get up and run a lap because you got your <laughs> stuff set up. <laughs> you probably should just get up, up and run a lap. But I, this is a lap Yo, running situation. Maria in the, she in the studio, just shucking the shoulders. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't have this on the Black Church PBS, but this is what's happening. This is what's happening. Because that's what it is. And for some of us, it's just a mindset. Yeah. For some mindset of us, it's the mindset that basic is so low, right? That I got to do all this stuff to be excellent. And it's like, well, no, assess what you already have, right? Let's yeah. not assume that it's a 40 year journey from enough to excellent. Shut up. Let's not make this assumption. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's not. Like, what? Poor quat. Look, you know that you know that uh, folks <laughs> folks was in the desert in the wilderness for forty years. I just want you to know that on what they, was no more than a week long journey. I mean, it really was no more than a week long journey. Just lost, just in the desert, just waiting, just toiling, complaining. Okay, fighting, fighting. The fight sound familiar. Poor quat. But some folks are going to be listening and saying, "Be like, look, Cash, look, Maria. Easy for y'all to say, okay? Kashana, you on your own company. Maria, you doing your own thing." What about me? What about me? I love all the singing. Just wanna, it yeah, comes do, to me naturally. Do you have know. sound effects now? I want to applaud. Oh, I don't know. We may be in season three. Yeah, let's do it. Let's we got to get it. it together. PJ, hey, <laughs> that's our producer. <laughs> get it together. Number one producer Number on the one podcast producer scene. On the, yay. I just be naming people stuff. Number one. <laughs> He's award winning. He's going to let you know. Look. But seriously, like, I, I'm thinking like now, like, wait. Folks are going to be like, no, but things are actually happening at work. I'm actually not getting ahead at work. Right. I'm actually not being seen. I'm actually getting stepped on and stepped over. I actually know that at every turn and opportunity, somebody's trying to slice me and dice me up the middle. There are actually studies and, and, and figures and documents that show that, particularly if you are a black woman, that it, grand opening, grand, grand closing. <laughs> I just got hired as chief development officer with no staff, no budget. What you <laughs> what you what you what you, what you, what you, what you developing? <laughs> They're like, here, welcome, Kashana, the, the nation builder. And then I remember I was giving, I was coaching um, some uh, chief development cohort the other day, um, and one of the things that I said was I reviewed everybody's job description, and you know we're digging into professional development plans, and I said, hey, 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 the job is to raise money. <laughs> Right. I, I know that it says you're over marketing and communications. I know it says you're over policy. I know it says you're over new site development. Also, the job at the end of the day is to raise money. It is the reason I am in the field. You might not like me. Hey. You might not like my process. I'm just saying. You might not... Um, appreciate my personhood <laughs> but boo boo Facts. these receipts though the receipts though the receipts and the receipts drive us to all manner of behavior so i think <laughs> you know as we've been talking i've been like yo what the, what does basic look like for me and it what what stuck out to me was what keeps me with my engine running in the driveway and not going inside is my c is often somebody else's a yeah. And I don't even know what life looks like to just roll out with the C like, hey, I already know it's going to be excellent regardless. So here I am. And I'm cool with that. Like, I don't even know what that looks like. Like, this is new. Like, if you get a C. I, I was talking with my husband who's in seminary. Shout out to my boo. He puts up with me. <laughs> That's out. great. Um, He's in seminary. And we, we I often like. Instead of having direct arguments with him, because I'm not trying to throw him off when he's trying to do his last semester, <laughs> I'd be like, let me discuss this verse with you, babe. Like, mm -hmm. I see it one way. Tell me how. <laughs> so, because <laughs> I'm not trying to attack him when he's trying to write his whole, like, manifesto of his call. Like, I'm just like, let me not come at you personally today. <laughs> so, you know, I was telling him, you know, we're, I was talking to him about, and for those of you not familiar with the Christian faith in the Bible, I'll do my best to break it down quickly don't want to labor you on this point. Um, but, you know, in, in the book of Genesis, which is the story of how we've come to be as a, as a, 
as a planet, as a humanity, you know, God tells Adam and Eve, hey, don't eat this apple. You eat this apple, you disobey me. That's a sin. That's you a wrap. You will surely die. What happens? Adam like, and Eve eat the apple. Eat the apple anyway. Sound did, good, Lord. Did I Adam see and, that and I raised you one. When they bit it, did they die? <sighs> not exactly. They did not. So I think they thought, oh, we got over. Right. They were like, oh, God out here. He out here just talking God empty. Yeah, just talking foolish. Just talking f- reckless. We are clearly alive. <laughs> <laughs> and they, 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 they were like, God out here talking reckless. It was like, Eve looked at Adam. Is that what is that between your legs, boy? That's how my daughter talks to me. She thinks <laughs> she looks at me like you just out here talking. Yeah. You know the wages of sin are death. I sin every day. I'm still living, breathing, right. sinning some more. What what are we talking about? But I think either we need to expand our idea of death. Like, doesn't it kill you a little bit every day not to be yourself? Shut up. Just a little bit. Then it just eat just a just a little bit of you dies every day. Every day when you're in these situations that um that don't serve you. That don't serve you. That don't give you life. They're not life giving. And I joyful. And I and I think that part of the systems, I'll name it, the systemic white supremacist capitalism mm-hmm. in which we are all existing. Mm-hmm. Um, will Global. have us believe that it's something we did, and sometimes it is. Some some of us some of us are just out here wilding, like and yeah, raggedy. We're not doing our jobs well, you know. We out here. The, the 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 description says you must have a degree to get this promotion, and we over here trying to make an exception. You know, <laughs> like you know, some some that of these is not things, the definition of exceptionalism. <laughs> some of these things are real, right? Yeah, some of them are. Um, but some yes, to your point, Kishana, people are being excluded discriminated against they're being um sabotaged yes um it's a big one they're they're being undermined they're being definitely undervalued um if not at all underappreciated yes um and some of that is the manifestation of this underlying systemic issue right right that we are dying every day just a little bit more a little bit more. And some of that death is the death to our very personhood. That we don't get to show up as ourselves. That we take on these roles that um, aren't integrated with our authenticity. I heard a great definition of integrity, which is um, something about like the alignment of all yourselves. And I think of that because I talk about all yourselves as being a kaleidoscope. Remember when, you know, mm-hmm. and you just keep turning the kaleidoscope and it keeps turning and it keeps turning. I remember I used to love making them as a kid because you take the paint and then you turn it and you turn it and make this beautiful. And it changes. And it changes. And it's, like, and it's yeah. uh. And there are some days, especially in a pandemic, now that I'm doing everything in my one home. Yes. There are some days and even within the hours of one day where I've got to change that kaleidoscope That's it. to be more mommy Maria. And then I got to change it to be like, okay, mommy's, mommy's on a call now, boo-boo. So find yourself a little independent play. Yeah. Because this, I've changed. I've changed. <laughs> <laughs> the situation has changed. You know, um, sometimes I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sous chef. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I'm a, I'm a janitor, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a cruise director. Yeah. I'm how planning our activities today. We're going to go to the living room, everyone <laughs> at nine uh, o'clock. <laughs> We're going to set up a pillow fort <laughs> and we're going to watch a film on Disney plus. Thank you. Uh, so, you know, some, it does change, but the, the core integrity though, right. I think, I think we talked about it earlier is I would rather be myself as than take on the role of some caricature. Ooh, that was which slowly, is not the same. It's not the same thing. And that's nuance right there. Like being yourself as, yeah, means understanding that core, that center, and that being on uh, on solid rock. Yes, that's why I don't get mad, you know, when folks are like, "Oh, we tried it at this place and it wasn't a good fit." You know, I think you're. I think what gets people upset is like, "I can do that job," right? And it's like, yes, you can, but they won't thank you for that. No, they won't appreciate it. They won't make space for you to do it well. 
That's why it's not a good fit. And sometimes they're lying. Right. Sometimes they just don't want your they black don't behind want working there. That's it. They don't want your young behind working there. They don't want your old behind working there. They don't want your there. old behind working there. Okay. You know, that sometimes it is that. I don't want people to think that I really thought it was. It, it is. It is. It is. We need to learn to trust our guts. Yes. We need to learn to hear our own voices. That's in the basic package, and it gets erased when you get on the excellence and it's the exceptional in package. in the basic it's package. In the basic, because when you move into that HOV lane of that, that excellence and that exceptionalism, you start to be validated and to listen to external mm. direction. Come on. And not your internal compass. Oh, oh, oh. where is your GPS? <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. Because Shauna want me messing up production. She want me running laps in Kalaloo Studios. Oh, I love it. I'm it's not going to do it. No, it's true. I'm not going to do it. It just came to me. That's why I was like, when we started talking, I was like, yo, this is. Look, it's a whole thing. I'm going to have to play this back. It's a whole thing. And I just, I just definitely, throughout every generation, there have been um, who I would call free black mamas, free yes. black women. Women who've just been like, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. This is how it be. I love them. I admire them. And um, what I feel that it's, is happening in this moment mm -hmm. is that rather than there being a few of these free black women in different places and spaces, there's like a critical mass. It's a cri right. It's a critical mass who's just like, oh, no, we're we going to have these pronouns. Right. On, I'm, I'm they. I will. Let me stop you there again. Oh, so what we're not going to do is just give me a nickname. No, no, no. My whole my, name is Kishana. My name is, my name is Kishana. It is spelled K-I-S-H. S-H-A-N-A. -A. Okay, Don't, be clear. That's that's it. That's the that's It's it. been my name that's my it. whole life. You that's can it. do it. I believe in you. I believe in you. <laughs> right. Actually, when you tell me that you don't see color, I just want you to know when you touched my face and wiped <laughs> off the foundation, ah! like your hands were brown. Just so we're clear. It does rub off. It does rub off. <laughs> yes. It's a true story. It really did happen. You can't touch my hair. Like but, that, like for but real. I, but I purchased it at the corner of 233rd and White Plains <laughs> Road in the Bronx. And you can you can touch all the samples there. You can. It's the same experience. Just not this one. Just not the one on my head that I paid for. There's so much <laughs> learning there. And I think that, you know, for me, there's just so many layers to this. Like this whole, like the external validation and the external affirmation and the external praise and the external validation. Um, and then the war paint you have to put on in order to be able to weather it. Um, Cause and it, it was a mask. Now it's war paint. Now Jesus. it's war paint. And if you were at home getting the reinforcement of that exceptionalism, that it's only good enough. If come on, then there was actually no safe place. Come on conditions for you. Just be your basic ass self. Basic. Is loving yourself unconditionally. Come on. Excellence has conditions. Excellence has folks and it's subjective. To, folks have to agree subjectively to that was excellent. Yes. And I don't, I don't, I don't want to play that game. Personally. <laughs> Personally. Folks have to agree. Folks have to somehow agree. Yeah, that was excellent. And you know what I know about folks and agreement? Because I've I've done a few. I'm not a philanthropist, but I've done a few of these like grant panel reviews. <laughs> you, have not, you have experience. A few of them. I, I put them on my cover letter and not my resume. <laughs> yeah, because you have experience. I have some experience in this. And what I have experienced from my experience is um, <laughs> you need one advocate. Yes. To go hard in the paint with a tight enough argument that all the other basic behind people in the room will agree with. That's it. That's group That's think it. at its finest. It's group think. I mean, Mich Michelle Obama told you, y'all like Michelle. Y'all y'all like, y'all like the floatus. Y'all love her. She Bravo. said, you get into these rooms and they're not that smart. They're not that great. They're not super people. You know, there's this idea we have that the people in charge know best because they're better. And that's not true. The people in charge are just the people in charge. in charge. And so you and I got to come back and talk about that part because that's <laughs> about power. And, you know, my good friend Efi Walker mm. um, over at Offer talks about that all the time. That the the real for the nine cash money for the nine nine two thousand. I know that's one of my favorite references mm, mm, plenty of is about hey, yeah. is about power. And so yeah. we got to, you, you and I got to chop it up about that. Well, listen, Maria, you and I can talk 
forever in a day because we have so many thoughts so we have to have you back i gotta have her back as a regular y'all drop it in the comments (laughs) if you want maria back as a regular i'm trying you see i'm always trying to convince her to do something with me and then if you just come over and do this and then if you just do this one thing i already told you this is my interview for the cameo yes come on this is my interview people somebody asked me you're gonna do a podcast no but i'll be on kashana's that's it i'll tell you when it drops that's it that's it i'm like listen then we're gonna have to have you on the show on youtube we're gonna have to have you everywhere (laughs) what i would love is a banter section with the one and only Bernard Palmer. If absolutely. he would have me. If uh, he oh, would have me. I am absolutely setting that up and that's going to be a thing because he literally I feel like is the real star of this podcast. It's <laughs> actually not me. And I was like, what if I just change it to like, let's take this offline with Kashana and Limbo- and Bernard, Bernard Palmer because that literally would be the show. Not me. I just want a show where like Bernard Palmer is talking about things and then he like demands tea. <laughs> And I come in with the tea. <laughs> we need to video that. And then I that needs to be on and camera. And then I literally spill the tea about that's something. It, that's like, it. That's, that's, that's it. That's it. me and Bernard's that's section. It. We need to set that whole thing up. Yes. That's a done deal. That's a done deal. <laughs> that's the <some> realization. <laughs> I know you hang out on Twitter and on Instagram, but how can people stay connected to you if they want to continue the conversation? Oh, if they want to continue, oh, shoot, I should make them pay. This sounds like labor. <laughs> 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 this is not a hobby. It sounds like a business. <laughs> Sounds like a small venture. <laughs> Continue this conversation. Y'all can pay for y'all can y'all can pay for my GMAT what's, what's prep your, course. What's your cash app though? <laughs> like <laughs> I need to look it up. People know that stuff no, offhand. I do my fun diva. No, I don't know mine offhand. Oh my gosh. I took whatever automated one they gave me because Maria is a super popular name. <laughs> <laughs> but um but I'm on Twitter, I'm pretty sure at Maria Dautrush, and Dautrush is spelled D-A-U-T-R-U-C-H-E. I have no punctuation, no, no, like, symbols. It's just Maria Dautrush. And that's also where you can find me on Instagram. And my Instagram will be switching it up. I think I'm, um, I don't know. I'm going to dig deeper into this conversation on Instagram and maybe Twitter, too. We're going to do something else because, you know, we're supposed to be uh, dissecting hotels. That we'll do on video. So we got to do that. Okay. So we're going to listen, y'all keep it locked and we will be talking to y'all real soon. This has been another dope episode of let's take this offline and we'll talk to y'all soon. All right, Fab Crew. On our next episode, I'll be talking to a possibility coach about how to really explore the possibilities so you can have the career and life you love. Don't forget to download, subscribe, forward to a friend, and let everybody know how good we are by leaving a review. If you've spent your entire life performing, then my friend, today is the day I'm asking you to take a bow, close the curtain, and take a nap. (laughs) I understand. Uh, Listen, y'all, I get it. Many of us grew up performing to get to an A, okay? Performing to get the trophy. Performing to gain approval of fill-in-the-blank person you love. And when you look at it, it seems like the only way to easy street is down performance lane. Am I right? (laughs) And if you're not careful, you'll look up and have no freaking idea who you are when the lights are low and the fancy is stripped away. You won't know. Do you even like yourself? I see a lot of professionals careening toward midlife, bewildered, tired, angry, and then leading from that place, which is terrible and scary. And it doesn't have to be your story. So if you have been struggling with the performance dance, friends, today is the day I'm asking you to do that final twirl, take a bow and exit stage left.